Hi everyone, Mr. Davis here. Um, this is another video for our paper two work. And we're going to start off with 10 questions that aren't just focused on one particular topic, but cover lots of different topics linked into the content we've covered for paper two. I'm not going to read through all the questions. I want you to pause the video, take your time to go through each one of them. There are 10 questions in total. Make sure you have a quick check on how many marks are available for each one and make sure that you are going through each one carefully to provide yourself with an answer written down at the top of your page, please. Give yourself five to 10 minutes to do that, ideally without checking back through your notes, but if you absolutely have to, uh, then do that and pause the video here and we will pick it up very shortly. Okay, so we're gonna go through these one at a time. Hopefully you've got your answers down in front of you, have a purple pen ready, Tick anything that you have correct and anything that's not quite right, please add in the corrections in purple pen. So first one, one example of a self-paced skill. So have a think about what a self-paced skill is. So that's a skill where you control the start and the speed of the movement. So something like a free throw in basketball. Where no one else is pressuring you. Uh, you can take your time, bounce the ball, have a look up the basket, and in your own time, you, you play the shot. Lots of other examples that you could have a golf shot, a tennis serve, things like that. Anything where you're in control of the start and the speed of the, of the skill. One example of an outcome goal, so just a standard uh, example. Anything where you're saying you're winning the event, that's the crucial thing. If you win the event, if you're aiming to win the event, that's an outcome goal, regardless of your performance in the actual um, completion of that event. Your aim is to win it. The A, what does that represent in the SMART target? So often this has got mixed up because in different um, contexts, it's, it's something different. But for us in GCSE PE, the A is accepted. So who's it needs to be accepted by? It's accepted by the performer and if they have a coach, and it's accepted by them also. Now, when we're looking at arousal, there's the inverted U graph for arousal. And I wanted you to describe the three stages. So we have the first stage, as arousal increases, performance increases. So it's always about what's going on with arousal and how that influences performance. So it's arousal first. As arousal increases, performance increases up to an optimal point. So optimal, what does optimal mean? Optimal meaning like the perfect point, so up to the perfect or optimal point of arousal. And then beyond that, as arousal continues to increase, performance decreases. And that process can be applied to any skill in sport, regardless of whether it's a high arousal skill, such as a tackle in rugby, or a low arousal skill, such as a throw of a dart. Okay, that still applies. Primary benefit of including fibre in your diet. So fibre is all about aiding digestion and this slightly comical phrase of keeping you regular. I won't go into details of what that means. I'm sure you can imagine. Identify which somatotype would be best suited to long distance running. So the ectomorph. The ectomorph is the thin individual that's not carrying any great excess weight, any excess muscle or fat. Um, they tend to be fairly light and, uh, and short in frame, although not always about height, but in this instance, it, it kind of makes sense that they are. One example of an intangible extrinsic motivation. That sounds quite complicated. Uh, break it down. So intangible. Intangible means that you can't touch it. It's, you can't put your hands on it. And extrinsic means it comes from an external source. So it's not, a, a, not an internal source of motivation. So something like uh, the applause or the cheering from the crowd. You can't put your hands on it. You can't touch it, but it's still something that's generated from an external source as opposed to intrinsic motivation, which comes from within. So something like uh, pride in your performance. One stress management technique used to increase arousal. So the one of the three it's positive self-talk. You can't just say self-talk. It has to be positive self-talk. That is the stress management technique to use, use to increase arousal. Have a quick think. What would it be if you were trying to um, decrease your arousal levels and bring them down? So one of them would be deep breathing. 
and the other one various different names for it but something along the lines of mental rehearsal visualization imagery anything like that they're fairly similar in in um, what they involve it's essentially just thinking through what it is that you're about to do um, picturing yourself performing it well and that should calm you down lower your arousal bring your heart rate down get your anxiety under control and then enable you to perform the skill uh, successfully Number nine, three characteristics of feedback most suitable for beginners. So when you're thinking about feedback, can you remember the acronym that you need to remember? Acronym is REPIN. So REPIN essentially means for the first three letters, the R is feedback, which is based on results. The E means the feedback should be extrinsic and the P should be positive. And if you're looking at elite performers, it would be the PIN. Uh, part of that acronym. So the P is feedback based on performance, I is intrinsic, and N is negative. And then in, if in that question, you would then have to go on and justify each of those things, but you don't have to do that right now. Finally, 10, the term etiquette. So what does etiquette mean? And it's simply the unwritten rules of behavior in sport. So things that you don't have to do but it's just considered good etiquette is means it's part of the game. So a standard example of that would be shaking hands. Um, you don't have to shake hands, but it's just considered part of uh, the game in most, uh, in most sports. There are lots of other examples as well. So for instance, in tennis, you are, as a returner, you're supposed to be ready when the server is about to, uh, to serve. It's not against the rules if you're not, but it's just, considered something nice to do. Martial arts, you're supposed to bow in front of your opponent. Golf, you're not supposed to walk across their line or move when they're taking a shot. So lots of different things. You don't get penalized for it. It's not cheating if you don't follow that, uh, that etiquette. So it's not a rule, but it's an unwritten rule that um, in most sports, uh, sports performers will abide by. Okay, make sure, like I said, that you've uh, ticked off anything that's correct. Hopefully lots of that will uh, Will be stuck in your head. Uh, anything that's not, it's worth making a note of and perhaps having a look back through your notes, uh, looking at some of the other videos uh, online. Um, that will help you get your head back around those topics. Uh, any corrections, write them in and then we will move on. Okay, so today's topic is all about the media, part of a bigger topic to do with something that we're going to look at, which is, which is termed commercialization, but the media is certainly one major part of that. So, learn an objective. I will learn how the media promotes sport and the impact this has on sports performers. Please make a note of that nice and neatly at the top of your page, underline in the title and the date. And then the key terms which you need to be aware of, just have a think about what each of these means before I give you the definition. So what does marketability mean? May not be a word you've, you've used a lot, previously, but have a think about it in terms of the media and in terms of sport, what might marketability mean? So in short, it's something that's the, it's able to be sold. So whether you're talking about a product, a service, a, a performer, something that is able to be sold. If you increase your marketability, you increase the likelihood or the ability of uh, that product uh, to be sold. And then, like I said earlier, commercialization is this kind of umbrella term which covers various different other topics, media being one of them. So what does commercialization actually mean? So commercialization, the technical definition is the process of introducing a new product or service onto the market. So the market is essentially where goods are bought and sold. And commercialization is the process of introducing it, promoting it, um, and putting it out there for people to purchase. Marketability and commercialization, a couple of key terms to note down. Make sure you've got all of that before we move on, and then we'll take a look at the next slide. So the first thing to do, hopefully this is fairly straightforward, you need to have different examples of what makes up the media. So I've said at the top, the media is made up from a variety of different sources. 
for example, the TV, what I want you to do is the media is made up from, note that down, and then underneath that, make a list of all the different things which you think make up the media. So like I said, I'll start with TV. What else is the media made up from? Pause the video here, give yourself a couple of minutes just to note down all the things which you think make up the media. Okay, so let's just add to our list. So we've got TV, it's probably the most obvious popular one, but also we have the radio, newspapers, magazines, the internet, social media. Those are the key ones. There, there may be others that you could throw into the mix, but these are the key ones that you're gonna to need to think about in terms of the media and its involvement in sport. Just make sure you've got all of those down before we move on. Okay, now we need to think about how each one of those types of media is involved in sport. So your task for each type of media listed on the previous slide, outline the different ways that they are involved in sport and how they promote sport. So I've got an example here for you and then you can do the others. So for instance, if I was looking at TV, this is how I want you to structure your answers and map it out. So one way TV promotes sport is through showing live matches. For example, Sky Sports show live Premier League football matches every week. So it's even better if you can add in some, some kind of wider knowledge and some specific examples. Uh, if you're not sure, that's okay, but just make sure that you've got the, the key information about how that um, type of media promotes uh, and is involved in sport. And ideally, you can think of at least a couple for each type of media. So then I would go on to say my second bullet point, another way is through, and then continue with that statement about how TV can promote um, sport in another way. So it's through live matches, but that's not the only thing um, that is shown on TV in terms of sport. There are lots of different things shown on TV. Um, so maybe start with my one. You can have that one as a starting um, bullet point and then add this one in to continue with another way is through this and then continue to do the same thing for the rest of the types of media that you've got on your list. Okay, so pause the video here, take a good 10 minutes to make sure that you've got that done uh, to a good standard, at least a couple of examples for each type of media. Okay, so the next part of this, positive influences that the media can have on sport. So sport as a, as a whole involves, it kind of encompasses lots of different things. So it's the event, it's the performers, it's the officials, it's the sponsors. Um, it encompasses lots of different things, the clubs, um, the fans, so everything that's involved in sport. So when you get a question like this, where it's, it's asking you about the effects on sport, you can bring examples in across all of those different things. It doesn't just have to be about performers, although that is the obvious one. And the way that I want you to structure it is in two bullet points. One of your bullet points is gonna give you a mark for describing what it actually does. So what um, that, that positive um, influence is, and then the impact that it has on sport. So what is it? and then how it impacts sport. So again, I've given you an example here. So this one is particularly about TV. Uh, it's worth thinking about the different types of, of media when you're doing this, because it might be that some types of media offer different examples that you can go to. So just bear that in mind. Um, otherwise, if you're just thinking about TV and you can think of lots of things for that, that's good. But obviously try and be um, cover your work with, with different examples. So. TV highlights good performances and gives examples for other athletes to copy. So that's what it does. Then the impact of that is that it helps to improve the standards of performance within the sport. What it does, first bullet point, the overall impact on sport is the second bullet point. Okay, have a go at that. Pause the video here. See if you can come up with your own examples. Once you've kind of run out of ideas, move on to the next slide. And I've got a couple of um, 
clues that will help you um, hopefully pick out a few more positive influences. But have a go at doing it before you move on. And then it's only when you get stuck that I want you to, to nip onto the next slide. OK. Right, so we'll do these one at a time. You may already have these down. If you have, then great. If not, then I don't want to talk too much about it. I just want to give you the opportunity to, to kind of think about what's in the in the image. So on the first one, you can see that it's an official there. But think about what he's looking at. What's the involvement there of that kind of element of the media? And what's the impact? Pause the video here and try and give yourself um, a minute or two to think about that one and write something down. The next one is here. You can see a couple of young kids performing uh, a Joe Wicks routine. So again, one mark for saying what's going on. Another mark for saying what the impact is on sport. And that might be the bit that takes a little bit more thinking. Pause the video here and have a go at trying to put that together. A couple of bullet points. Third one, a little bit cryptic, but obviously it's to do with money. So have a think about what the media's influence is there. What, how is money involved uh, in sport through the media? What's the overall impact of the media? Um, the media's involvement in sport there linked to money. And finally, this one just shows uh, uh, Wimbledon and the uh, promotion and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the delivery, if you like, of, of that as an event through the media. How can that have a positive influence? What's gonna be the influence? The, the reason why I've chosen something like Wimbledon, have a think about when you are most likely to see large numbers of people in the park playing tennis. When does that craze happen every single year? linked into the what you're thinking about on that picture so I try and put that together what's going on how does it impact on um on sport as a whole okay give yourself a few more minutes to pause the video here just try and make sure that you've got something down for each of these okay and let's just clarify what each of these means because sometimes it's difficult to to pick it up from uh, from just those cryptic clues so again for each one we're looking at what's going on with it and then what the impact is. So you don't have to have this word for word. If you've already got something that reflects what's on, on the slide, then great, you can just tick it off. Otherwise, it might just mean that you need to edit it a little bit. And if you're completely off, off, uh, off target with your comment, just make sure that you make a note of these so it's nice and clear. So the media can help officials make decisions. So that was the referee looking at the television screen. What's the impact of that? How has that helped sport? Well, it's helped to improve the reputation of the sport because in theory, more decisions are, are getting made that are accurate. Now, there's a whole load of um, contentious issues about the use of uh, things like VAR, particularly in football. Uh, and there's potentially questions where you do have to evaluate forms of the media and, and how they've impacted. So you're talking about positives and negatives. But for now, let's just uh, hold that thought and focus on the positives. The overall impact being that uh, reputation of the sport in theory is better because decisions like that are being made accurately. The second one was the Joe Wicks example. So the media can promote the health benefits of sport. What's the impact there? Well, it helps to increase participation or popularity of activities. So you could almost have that the other way around um, where more people are going to be participating and then that has a positive effect on uh, the health of people and taking part, more people taking part in, in sport means more a healthier population, more involved in sport. Um, but either way, um, those two comments uh, are important for that one. The next one, so the media provides increased finance. And so this was this idea of money. So the media brings money to sport. Yeah, and there's lots of different ways that it does that whether it's through broadcasting rights, so channels pay into to show the events, the sponsorship that might happen through the media, private deals such as pay-per-view. So lots of boxing um, these days is, is done on a pay-per-view where people actually have to buy 
the event in addition to having a particular like sky sports might have lots of boxing on but for a particularly big fight these days you might have to pay an extra 20 pounds to watch anthony joshua okay so that's a that's a pay-per-view event so lots of money coming into sport what does that mean what's going to be the impact of that it can lead to increased grassroots investment increased prize money increased in, increased um, facilities and improved facilities increased salaries essentially more money involved in the game and that should in theory trickle down into lots of different areas um, it doesn't always do that particularly in in football um, but that's the idea the media can increase accessibility to sport so essentially more people are able to access it and take part in it how uh, how has that impacted sport it just means more popular more people are then going to be actually doing it so if the promotion is there if people are more motivated by what they're seeing and hearing about uh, and wanting to take part in it that's the idea of this um the tennis so every year when wimbledon's on there's a huge surge of people who go to the park and play tennis it's always the way after the fa cup final loads of kids will go down to the park and have a kick around of football it's just the natural influence that um sport has through the media so that it can increase accessibility and it means more it becomes more popular with the fans so a popular sport is a successful sport okay so just make sure you've got each of those down before we move on and then the next thing we're going to look at is the the negative influences that the media can has again we're just going to look at it as an overall thing on sport as a whole but you might get questions which are specific to uh, performers specific to officials or fans or the sponsors themselves but the sport side of it is just kind of all encompassing it involves potentially all of those things and um, so you might think of um, uh, a, a range of different examples here uh, beyond what I've got down uh, which would be great but for example things like again if you're looking at the TV increased number of people watching the event from home so it's good that people are interested in watching it, but how is that going to have a negative effect? Well, it means less people might be participating, less people actually attending the event as well. So it's not just participating, but it's also, I can write this in, attending. So less people go into the actual events, lower numbers of people in the crowd, has a potential negative effect it's all right if it's you know one of the big football clubs that can um have 100 million um people watching it from home and still fill a stadium with 75,000 people but if it's a smaller club that needs that income from people to come that to come to the uh the game but they're not fussed because they could just watch it on tv that's going to have an impact on the on the club and that as sport as a whole so that's my example Again, what it does and then the overall impacts. So pause the video here and see what other examples you can think of of uh, the media and the negative influence it can have on sport. Okay, so again, I'm gonna th just throw a few clues in here. Again, they're a little bit cryptic, but just uh, try and work with me here. So the first one is the football side of things on, on Sky Sports. So it's good that there's dedicated sports channels what might be the, the potential negative there? Which sport dominates media, particularly TV? And what's the, what's the potential impact of that? So for each one of these, just pause it, take a, a minute to think and have a note down. What, what's the point and what's the impact of that? So on this one, as I said, good that sport's shown on TV, but dominated by football, what's the impact? This one, I've got a couple of kind of headlines here. Hopefully it's pretty clear what's going on here. How is that going to have a negative impact on sport? Third one, so this idea of uh, the kickoff times, uh, traditionally at three o'clock, how many games actually kick off if we're looking at football, but this could be for lots of different sports how many games actually start at that time these days. That was the traditional time. 
very few now kick off at that time, sometimes none at all. I don't think there were any three o'clock kickoffs this Saturday, certainly not in the Premier League. So have a think about what impact that might have. And then finally, this is an example of a rule that was changed in sport and part, in part it was down to the influence of the media. So the changing of rules. So in this case, and this is just um, clarifying for you what a tie break is. So a tie break is a, um, an, a, an adapted way of uh, finishing a set in tennis. So normally you don't just keep going up and up and up. One person serves, the other person serves, and it goes on and on and on. A tie break is essentially first to seven points. Have to be too clear, but it's a quicker way of ending the set and potentially the match. So it's, it's the equivalent of a penalty shootout in football. It just brings it to an exciting end, but it's in part down to the fact that the media want that uh, excitement at the end of the game uh, and, uh, and rules are changed. So what's the potential impact of that? Pause the video here and just make sure you've got something down for each of those things in terms of the negative influence of the media and the impact that that can have on sport. Okay, and we'll just whiz through them quickly. So the first one, sport, as I said, is on TV is dominated by football. It's changing a little bit. Uh, there are other sports that are shown on, on, uh, on TV, but largely still very much dominated by football. What's the impact? But well, it just means that other sports don't really get a look in. There's, there's very little promotion. So how are they supposed to um, put themselves on, a, on, a, on an even level with football if football is the sport that's getting promoted all of the time? What about people that don't like football? So that's one of the potential negatives. The media can sensationalise events to make, uh, essentially to benefit, so to sell more papers. For instance, the, uh, the tabloids make a really big deal and often the information they're promoting is not actually true. It's linked into sport and they use that to sell their papers and to gain money for that. So it's almost against the sport, but for their own benefit. That can lead to things like an invasion of privacy. So players often becoming the focus of abuse. You know, these days, a lot of that is online, um, Twitter and um, Facebook and things like that. Lots of negative um, headlines about that sort of thing. Third one is the media can influence the timings of the event. So as I said, like the, the three o'clock kickoff is, is a rare event these days. And that is in part due to the influence of the media and particularly TV. So TV doesn't necessarily want all of the games at three o'clock. Have a think about why that would be the case. Why would it not be good for the TV just to have all the games every week on three o'clock? They like to spread them out. So if they can get more games on TV, it just means um, more people are watching their channel throughout the day. More money is coming into them. So if they've got a game at 12 o'clock and another one at two o'clock, then another one at 5.30 and another one at eight o'clock, which is essentially what's happened today. It's been a good day of football for me, but that can have a negative impact, particularly on the fans. So sometimes if it's, for instance, an FA Cup game and it's been put down at 12 o'clock and it's a team from up north has to travel all the way down to, to London or even further down to the south coast, that's particularly difficult to do. Equally on the way back, there's often a big hoo-ha in, uh, in London after an FA Cup final where teams from the north, so Man United, Man City, Newcastle, those sort of clubs, if they're down, they have to come down early Play the, play the game, and sometimes the FA Cup game is at 5.30 or even 8 o'clock. How are those people supposed to get home? So it has a negative influence on the sport because it impacts on the fans, and the fans are a key part of the sport. And finally, the media can influence the rules of the game. So again, I was talking about the introduction of this tie break in tennis, um, but it can also be things like in badminton. It's, it's completely changed the rules of badminton, where... In badminton, you used to only score when you won a point on your serve, but that was quite a slow way of playing. So now they introduced the change of rule where you can you can score a point whether you're serving or whether the opponent's serving. So it speeds up the game, 
makes it more exciting. But that wasn't the traditional rules of badminton. It's quite a significant change. And essentially that was done through the influence of the media who wanted that um, increased speed of an event to make it more exciting. But the traditions are lost. So just make sure that you've got each of those down in some form, what's going on and then what the impact has been. And then finally, potentially a bigger question uh, on this and um, moving forward, we'll see how other things can be uh, can be brought into this question. But initially, we'll just look at it from the point of view of the media. So a question like this. Sport has become commercialized. So remember what we said about what commercialized actually means. If you need to check back on your notes, it was one of the key words at the start. Sport has become commercialized in part due to its relationship with the media. Evaluate the impact that the media has had on sports performers worth six marks. So the first thing when you get a level mark question, I'm not going to do this because I want you to get into the habit of doing it. But remember, whenever you get one of these questions, and to be honest, you should be doing this with just about all the questions. Bug the question. So what does the B mean? You're going to box the keyword. Sorry, you're going to box the command word. So what's the command word here? So the command word is the word that's telling you what it is that you've got to do in the question. I'm not going to do it. I want you to do it. So for this, probably a good idea to write out the question in full and then it, you can go through the process of bugging it. So command word, box it. The U is underline the keywords, so like the key terms in the question that you need to focus on. And then the G is that you go over it. You go over it now, read through the question again, check how many marks it's worth. So you know how to, how, what the level of detail is that you need to do. And then once you've put your answer together, go back over it again to check that there's nothing you've missed out on. So bug the question, write it out in full, do that now, and then go through the process of bugging it. And then once you've done that, just to clarify the three uh, key parts of your answer without giving you any information about content. This is the structure that you should be looking for. Hopefully this is something that you're already familiar with, but AO1 should be the knowledge. So because it's a level marks question, LMQ, okay, anything where it's, it's worth six marks or nine marks and you're asked to evaluate or justify you know it's going to be a level mark question. There's going to be a whole page of just lines underneath it. The first part of it is the knowledge. You have to show your knowledge of the topic in the question. It's almost always going to be something that you've underlined within the question. So that that you part of your bugging. And I'm not going to do it, but you can reflect on what those keywords are. And in this case, it's pretty clear. You should be looking at the media. So you say what the media is. Second part is where you make your links and you apply your knowledge on this topic to what's the other thing? What are you linking it to? The impact of the media it's had on sports performers. So how can you link that to that? How does the media influence sports performers? Aim for at least a couple of comments there in a separate paragraph. And then the final bit is the bit which was always worth the most marks. And this is where you essentially answer the question, the evaluation. How has the media had positive effects on sports performers? Aim for at least two comments there, like detail. And how has the media potentially had some negative effects? And again, at least two comments, which you're going into a little bit more detail on. OK, knowledge. Then you link or apply that knowledge to the two different parts of the question. Then in a final um, paragraph or a couple of paragraphs, you complete your evaluation where you weigh in it up um, all the available evidence. OK, we'll take a look at the mark scheme for it uh, in detail next lesson. But if you could make sure that you've got a clear, well-structured answer for that at the end of your work today, take a photo of all of your work, whether it's typed or handwritten. And I would like an email with all of this work on at the very latest by Sunday, 31st of January. Okay, take it easy guys, bye-bye.